the dead. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Bethel. For those of you connected to Rochester Public Schools, we hope that your spring break has been and will be full of blessings. And for all of you, this is our hope today and through this week that Christ will touch you with his word, remind you who you are. That is his child in Christ. A few announcements for you this morning. This is your last chance. Today is your last chance to see the Easter musical drama, The Choice, that is going on right here on this stage today at 2 p.m. is the last performance of six, uh, and tickets are available in the narthex or at the door. Also, our Wednesday Lenten worship continues this week. Our Lenten theme is the life of Jesus in sand art and in scripture. The theme for this week is lost and found. We worship at noon, at 5.30, and at 7 on Wednesdays. We hope to see you there. And finally, you've probably seen a slide. I'll give a verbal announcement for it as well. The Adult Forum this morning, which is at 1030 in room 115, is our own Bill Bakken, a resident Bethel historian. He'll be giving a presentation really in celebration of the 150th anniversary of Bethel, which is this year. And his presentation this morning will be Bethel Church History, the first 70 years. If you have any curiosity about Bethel, uh, how this congregation came to be and where it came in the first 70 years, come to the Adult Forum this morning at 1030 in room 115. And we have a lot of confidence in Bill because he's already been asked to to do a a repeat presentation of this. And this will happen if you can't make it this morning or you want to see this twice on Tuesday, April 16th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in room 115. And now, we are called to worship by our Bethel Brass.
invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our sins and as we hear God's word which accomplishes forgiveness in our lives. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. God at the margins. We have wandered far from you. Again and again we lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget that you have saved your people before and promised to do so again. We do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future. For your forgiveness is sure, the welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Like a hen who gathers her chicks, God embraces you in tender care. Like manna in the desert, God feeds you with surprising mercy. Like a loving parent, God runs to meet you again this day, and he forgives your sins for the sake of Christ, leading you from death into life. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also in peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, 
for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Today's reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 6. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory, and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and feasted sumptuously every day. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the heaven, uh, carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with. Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented by these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good thing and Lazarus in like manner evil things. Now he is comforted here while you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he might warn them, and that they might not also come into this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. Uh, He said, But no, Father Abraham, If someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Children are welcome for the children's word. Thank you. 
Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Give me five. Give me, give me a bump. What's the deal? Is there a great chasm, a great gap between you and me? Did you hear about that great gap between Lazarus and Abraham and the rich man who was so, so far away? Now, I know there were some who built this set who are surprised I am here. They did not put the steps this year, so I made my own way to get up here. <laughs> So there's this great chasm, this great gap between you and me. And, you know, you know, I like to do high fives, yes? I like to do bumps. Do you guys get bumps from me? I'm going to continue talking, and I hope this goes very well. <laughs> there was a gap between Jesus and all the people, and God decided that he was going to close that gap by sending someone who would come down to the earth and be a savior for all the people. Who is that one? You know, it's the answer to almost all good children's word questions. The answer is Jesus. So from that cross, Jesus came down. So we might know that he loves us and he wants to give everybody a five. Quick, quick, quick. You got to do it fast. We only have an hour here. Thanks for coming and being a part of Jesus' worship today. You can go and be seated with your families. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Some years ago, I was on a study trip with the Augsburg University Board of Regents to Nicaragua, where Augsburg has a fine study program in Managua. One of the regions on the board is the CEO of Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota. On the last night of our time together, we debriefed our, our learnings and how we were feeling about that trip. And this LSS CEO said that she had been privileged to travel much of the world and had thought that she had seen some of the poorest parts of the world until she had come to Nicaragua and saw how desperately people were scraping for the basic necessities of life. One of the days that we spent together, we got on our little bus and we went out into the countryside to visit what we might call peasants, the people who try to farm, the trades people. I was excited to see on the itinerary that there was a carpenter since I do a little woodworking myself. When we got off at the carpenter's place, there was a small table set with some bracelets some little trinkets, knickknacks that one could buy. Through a translator, I had a wonderful conversation with the man, finally leading up to my asking with the good work that I see that you do, do you build furniture for other people? He said, oh, no. He explained that that would take too much wood. And in Nicaragua, it is illegal to cut down trees or to cut wood because so much of the land has been deforested. The reason he made such little things for sale was to make his pile of wood last as long as it possibly could. So through the translator, I asked, uh, well, how much wood do you have? And 
on a halfway wall in his shop, he pointed to a little pile of wood, a pile twice or three times the size that I burn every winter in my fireplace decoratively just so that I can hear the crackling flames and, and, and see the dancing of the light. I said, how long do you think that pile is going to last you? He said, if you were careful, uh, maybe it would last 18 months. Well, what are you going to do after the pile runs out? With a grim smile, he looked at me and said, Dios proverá, God will provide. When I read our gospel lesson today from Luke about Lazarus, I think of this poor Nicaraguan carpenter. With some guilt, I think about myself when I read about the rich man who had all that he wanted and more. You know, I can go on Craigslist any day of the year and find reasonably priced wood that will be delivered right to my door. Wood that I don't necessarily need, and the carpenter does. I'm sure that carpenter would be thrilled to get the the scraps that I cut up for kindling to start my fires. He would be thrilled with the wood from any one new house built in southeastern Minnesota. The wasted wood which fills dumpsters that will go to incinerators or to landfills. Lutheran preachers very often have difficulty with the gospel readings that are assigned for Lent. Lutheran preachers, for the most part, like to concentrate on God's love and grace. We like to lift up life and forgiveness. But the gospel texts in Lent, for the most part, focus on our need for repentance, for a change of life. It points out the great chasm between where we are and where God would like us to be. They are calls to action. There is no question about the call to action in today's gospel reading from Luke. Was it hard for the rich man to ignore that poor fellow lying at his gate covered with sores? As he walked by with his royal purple-colored linen? Could he not see this one dressed in rags covered with sores? As he ate one more fine meal behind the safety of his gated house, did he not ever think of the one who would be grateful just for the scraps from that meal? There are many African-American spirituals that point to the next kingdom. Not this life, but their hopes for the next life. Think of it for a minute. If your life is relegated to forced servitude and very little joy, you'd just soon escape this life to go and be in the love of Jesus. Yes? Some of those spirituals Lift up our lesson for today, Lazarus and the rich man. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. A rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. And the song goes on to talk about going home. Going home to be with Abraham, just like Lazarus. Home is not the slave quarters. Home is not the mansion on the plantation where some are forced to serve. Home is going to be with Abraham and also with Jesus. Jester Hairston has written one of those spirituals called Poor Man Lazarus. It traces the story of Lazarus, the short story in the Bible, starting with him just begging for crumbs from the master's table 
And finally, going to be redeemed and praising God. But the tagline that's repeated over and over in the song comes directly from the Bible and from the rich man's lips. Dip your finger in the water, come and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented by these flames, for I'm tormented by these flames. These, uh, these spiritu spirituals tell biblical truths. They may be truths that are uncomfortable for those who have plenty to eat, more clothes than we can wear, more rooms that we need in which to live. A man came to Bethel hoping for some help this past week. We sat down and we were not many sentences into our visit when he said, I've been living in my car, sleeping there every night for the past six months. I don't need to remind you what the past six months have been like in this place. He broke down in tears and he said, I don't know how much longer I can do this. There are all kinds of causes for homelessness in our community and beyond. We can lift up all the county programs that are designed to help people out of homelessness. We can point to all the help wanted signs in every business that display them in Rochester. But the fact is, we still have Lazarus lying at our gate, hoping for the scraps from the rich man's table. Two women came to see me at the same time last week, hoping for some help from Bethel. They are friends. One lives in Stewartville in a small apartment with her three children, the oldest 18, and to graduate from Stewartville this spring. The other lives in Rochester in housing and survives on $200 a month. We talked for quite a long while about their lives, about the joys in their lives, about the challenges they face. Twice, once in that conversation and once as they were about to leave, one of the women thanked for the conversation, for the time that we spent together because she was just recognized as a human being. Both women were thrilled with the limited help that Bethel was able to offer. A man called me this week wanting to know of our progress on the Bihar India project. Twice in that conversation, he said that uh, he was just like a little kid and he couldn't wait for any information that might come out over our electronic communications or through printed communications on the weekends. He just wanted to know how we are doing because he considers this Bihar project to be, be the most worthy one he has ever seen in the church, and he has done significant research on that project. He wanted me to, to know that his gift was going to put us at our goal or over our goal. This man has seen Lazarus, but Lazarus is a woman, a woman in India who is forced to stay home while her husband goes off to the big city hoping to earn a few dollars, staying home and raising a family, trying to feed that family on meager resources that keep them in abject poverty. But through Lutheran World Relief, she now has access to information, to training, to some materials that will enable her to raise crops that will not only feed her family in a healthy way, but there will also be some left over so there is a bit of an income and she can send her kids to school. She is not content at just receiving crumbs off the rich man's table. She wants to be proud 
in supporting her family and beyond. We as the people of God are called to recognize Lazarus at our door. I know that this gospel reading and this sermon sound like we can earn our way into the bosom of Abraham if we are just kind enough. Sounds like every poor person is going to be whisked off by the angels to enjoy the riches of heaven. And for those who have had plenty to eat and enjoy crackling fireplaces, well, we might be just hoping for a drop of water to cool our tongue in the agony of the flames. It is clear in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus has a preference for helping the poor. Luke just expects that if the Gospel is rightly heard, the people of God will appropriately react. My household does not need wood to burn in a fireplace. Our Nicaraguan carpenter needs that wood for his livelihood. If we have seen that need and we do not react, have we heard the call of the gospel? We ignore Lazarus at our door to our own peril. In the parable Jesus tells, the rich man is told that Moses and the prophets have been very clear about the care for all of God's people. They don't need someone who has come back from the dead to offer that word. Here's where we have a great advantage. You see, we still have the very clear words of Moses and the prophets. We have the words of Jesus as he walked this earth. And probably most important, we have the words of one who has come back from the dead with his radical message of love and grace, a radical call to action in love. Amen. Hymn 775, please rise and sing.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We have received so much of what is good, O Lord. Do not tolerate our complacency in the face of need and suffering, and show us how rich a life of generosity can be. Compel us to take action for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there is plenty for all, yet so many go without. Stir up dissatisfaction within us that we can bear global inequality no longer. Be with our brothers and sisters in Bihar, India, and the work of Lutheran World Relief in helping move your children toward enough for the needs of the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Spring reminds us that renewal is a constant and repeatable process. Make us grateful that you are a God of grace, of moment-by-moment -moment opportunities to choose what is good and beneficial for all. Lord, in your mercy. When one of your children suffers, we are all diminished. Open our hearts and use us as instruments of your healing. We pray for the recently hospitalized, Tom Brandy, Les Corey, Jana Chomi, Dorrance Davick, Gabby Brown, and Susan Branstead, that they may feel your goodness and healing presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. If our leaders model greed, our work for a fair planet will be far more difficult. Move those in power to see their positions as privileged opportunities to right what is wrong in our world favoring the voiceless, and strengthening ties between diverse populations. Lord, in your mercy. With hearts that are often weighted with grief, we ask for your comfort as we long for those who no longer share our days. Bless the gatherings this week of those who continue to grieve, that the gift of community and faith will continue to bring encouragement and strength. Be with Robert Julius and Leslie Harrington as they mourn their loved ones. Bind us together with your surpassing mercy and bring us to our final union with all the saints. Lord, in your mercy. We offer our prayers to you, O Lord. Keep us true to our words that we might act on our promises and fulfill your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated as we gather together our gifts.
Let us pray. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor and transform them into a feast that welcomes all in Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.